6-0, celebrating homecoming this weekend, looking for a landmark victory too. Number 600 in the school's football history. And after six straight wins, however close, the Nittany Lions have a real chance at a national championship. Country, the nation is alive with college football action in Lawrence, Kansas. Surprising Kansas, off to its best start in 17 years, is giving highly rated Oklahoma State all it could handle. The Cowboys scored first, but then this Norseth touchdown pass tied it back up at 7-7. And right now in Lawrence, the Jayhawks in the third quarter are on the verge of dealing Oklahoma State an upset loss as they lead 10-7. In South Bend, Indiana, Jerry Faust Irish are taking on a team that Faust has proven he can beat. Southern Cal, in the opening minutes of the game, Southern Cal fumbled the kickoff. Alan Pinkett took it in from three yards out. That made it 7-0. Now the Irish lead 17-0. ABC Sports presents College Football Today. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Radio Shack, the computer experts by Certainty, manufacturer of America's finest quality home insulation. By Zenith, Zenith VHS video recorders, the smart VCRs. The quality goes in before the name goes on. And by Skull, long cut smokeless tobacco. Easy to use, great taste, that Skull long cut. Now with today's scores and highlights, our studio host, Jim Lampley. Hello again. There's a lot going on. Iowa, after the victory over Michigan, remained number one, of course, in both wire service polls. The rankings you see here are from the UPI coaches poll, not from the Associated Press writers poll. And Iowa, on a long to Happel touchdown pass, is on top of Northwestern in the first quarter, seven to nothing. That game is at Northwestern. West Virginia is playing at Penn State. That's one of two regionally televised games here on ABC Sports. If you're not watching West Virginia, Penn State, then you'll be seeing Colorado at number three ranked Nebraska in Lincoln. Colorado off to its best start in many years, but Nebraska has won 22 of the last 23 games in that series. Meanwhile, Michigan dropped only to number four after the field goal loss to Iowa, and they lead Indiana 18-15 in what has been a tough battle in the third quarter. Bill Mallory, of course, of course, coaches Indiana. Two of his sons play for Michigan, and Indiana got the first rushing touchdown today that Michigan has given up all year long, but Michigan's getting a big effort from Jamie Morris. They lead it 18-15. Mississippi State is playing at number five. Auburn, of all the teams in the Southeastern Conference, Mississippi State has given Auburn more trouble than any other during the Die jackson regime, and they lead it 6-0 in the first quarter. Utah and Air Force are playing later today. The winner will take over the lead in the Western Athletic Conference. Brigham Young, which will be playing at Texas El Paso tonight, has played one fewer conference game than either Utah or Air Force, so the Utah Air Force winner will lead the whack at this stage of the season. Ohio State is playing at Minnesota later today. Lou Holtz has the Minnesota people wearing gold and all fired up for the visit of Keith Byers and company. The big news in Columbus this week for those of us who observe humanity in college football is that 72-year-old Woody Hayes was released from the hospital after a 23-day stay there following a heart attack. Woody's second visit to the hospital this year. He had a stroke earlier in the year. He's 72 and we wish him very well. Florida State at North Carolina, the Tar Heels on homecoming day trying to spring an upset and leading 10-3 in the third quarter. Florida State with Thomas at quarterback. Of course, McManus is out for several weeks. And of course, the North Carolina touchdown was an Anthony to Winfield touchdown pass. Iowa State is tied up at 7-7 with number 10 ranked Oklahoma. Oklahoma has Aikman out probably for the season. Casillas still out. Tillman out with the hamstring injury. And Holloway is only the second freshman ever to start at quarterback for Oklahoma since World War II. The other one was Troy Aikman. Southern Cal at Notre Dame. We'll be showing you highlights of this game a little bit later on. Suffice it to say, it has been all Irish as they lead 17-0 in the second quarter. Colgate is at Army. The Black Knights of the Hudson bouncing back after the loss to Notre Dame lead 17-0 second quarter. Pittsburgh has been very tough against the running game all year, giving up less than two yards per carry, but both of those Navy touchdowns are by Napoleon McCallum, and the Middies lead 14-7 second quarter. Temple at Syracuse. Syracuse has gotten three interceptions from Marcus Paul, and they lead 29-6 in the fourth quarter. Boston College began the day with 34 turnovers, leading the nation in that category. They've got four more today to make it 38. 
and Cincinnati leads them 10-3 in the third. Richmond is 7-0 and ranked number one in Division I AA. But today they're moving up to 1A, playing Rutgers and winless Rutgers with only the tie with Florida to show so far is leading 20-10 in the third quarter. Duke at Maryland. Maryland has won the last 11 times they've played, but they are tied up right now at 10-10 in the third. North Carolina State denying rumors that Steve Spurrier is headed there to succeed Tom Reed as head coach is trailing Clemson 31-3 in the third quarter. Virginia at Wake Forest. Both teams need a win. Virginia's lost three of the last four. Wake Forest is down to the third string quarterback and the Cavaliers lead 22-11 in the fourth. Virginia Tech and Florida playing for only the second time ever. Florida trying to make it 17 games in a row without a loss, leading 32-10. Kentucky and Georgia. It is 26-6. A final in that ball game as Bill Dooley's dogs, or Vince Dooley's dogs, I should say, were the winners. Alabama at Memphis State. Ray Perkins' radio show was lit up by Ira Alabama callers this week criticizing his offense, but they lead Memphis State 7-0 in the first quarter. Vanderbilt at Mississippi. Vanderbilt has a lot of trouble winning in Oxford, and they trail 14-0 in the first. South Carolina at East Carolina. Both teams idle last week, and the Gamecocks leading 14-3 at the half. And now it's time for the Nissan Report, which this week is a look at highlights of what, have hap what has happened so far in South Bend, Indiana, where Notre Dame has gotten off to an ideal start against Southern Cal. After the Trojans fumbled the opening kickoff, Pinkett took it in on this three-yard touchdown run. It was 7-0 Notre Dame. Terry Faust is trying to become a, a winner over Southern Cal three years in a row, something neither Dan Devine nor Ara Parsegan could accomplish. And after a 71-yard drive, Berline scored to make it 14-0. Carney has added a field goal. It is 17-0 now Notre Dame. An interesting year for this rivalry. Neither of the two teams are rated in the top 20 football polls. And Bino Cook is the luster off of Notre Dame Southern Cal. There's never been a bad Humphrey Bogart movie, and there's never been a bad Notre Dame Southern Cal game. This series started in the, in the middle 20s, and up until 1960, Southern Cal was dominated by Notre Dame. Although in 1938, Notre Dame lost the national title because USC beat them, and also in 1931, in a game in Chicago, Southern Cal stopped a long winning streak of Notre Dame. But in 1960, John McKay came to Southern Cal. He lost the first two, but after that, he did beat Notre Dame, won national titles. The series in the last 24 games are 7, 14, and 22. So it's still a great rivalry. And it also, Notre Dame lost national titles in 64, losing to Southern Cal, and also 74. And surely there are a lot of Southern Cal fans who believe that if McKay were still coaching there, despite his troubles in Tampa, that they wouldn't be trailing 24 to nothing now. I've just been told that another touchdown was added for Notre Dame, and it's 24. They were a little bit upset, and they had a legitimate beef. Uh, last week, Miami dominated. They beat Oklahoma and had a big victory there, marked up to 5-1. and one. Now they're playing competent opponents, went 5-1 and one so far this season. Oklahoma, early on, hasn't had a real tough schedule, was 3-0. and oh. Now 3-1, and one, a team that Jimmy Johnson beat. He wakes up 24 hours later, finds out he's still ranked four spots below him. And he's a little bit upset about it. And he's got a right to be Oklahoma struggling again today. Um, not to put a jinx on Jimmy Johnson in Miami, but two years ago they lost an opening game against Florida, went on to win 11 in a row and win the national championship. I think Nebraska learned a lesson. If you're going to lose a game, you got to lose it early in the season. Miami's got a shot at it this year. They once again lost the opener to Florida and have won every time since then. And I think they've got a point. They beat Oklahoma on their home field and were four spots below them in the rankings. I'll be back with more scores right after this. Pearson is with nation's hottest league. Illinois leading Wisconsin 21-3 in the second quarter. David Williams will become the second all-time leading receiver in NCAA football history today. Purdue is leading Michigan State 24-14. Everett, with another sensational effort, completed 20 passes in the first half. Bowling Green is one of the four unbeaten, untied teams in Division 1A. With Brian McClure quarterback, they lead Kent State 13-7 in the third quarter. Oklahoma State and Kansas, we mentioned at the top of the telecast, it is now tied up at 10-10, and either team will be on its way to a possible big bowl bid with a win today. Not necessarily a major bowl, but a good one. Kansas State at Missouri, and Missouri looking for its first win of the year, finally has the lead in a game, leading 7-0 in the second quarter. Well, now, why are we showing you the Bridgewater at Plymouth State score? Because Plymouth State is leading 28-9 in the third quarter. And Joe Dudek, Plymouth State running back, has broken Walter Payton's career college football touchdown record today. He has TD runs of 16 and 58 yards in the first quarter. 143 yards rushing and three touchdowns at the half. They stopped the game for fireworks at Plymouth State. And 
Dudek has broken Peyton's record. So that's the final score for this moment. We'll have more, but right now, a word from our sponsors and our local stations. In your area will be taking place. We're waiting in State College, Pennsylvania, for the 52nd meeting between West Virginia and number two, Penn State. Penn State is 6-0, ranked second and third in the two major polls. Talking yesterday with Coach Joe Paterno, the special teams kept coming up, and in particular, the kicking game, a phase he stresses. Well, it's free position and I win a game. I usually start off, in, when I start talking to the squad in preseason, as, as to how you win and lose football games and other things we've got to concentrate on in practice. And I always tell them, we're going to win one or two football games with our kicking game. You're going to win a game with your kicking game when you, when you absolutely, everything else is going wrong. Somebody's going to make a play in a kicking game. It's going to win the game for you, and you're going, to, you're going to come out of it only because you had a great kicking game. Still watching your team, a relatively unheralded big man named Steve Smith is becoming your big play man. The more, you, the more he plays them on, begin to believe you're right, Keith. He's made some great plays for us. He's, a, he's made big runs. He's a big man. He's a very powerful man. Our kids don't like to tackle him. And it's the one guy they don't like to tackle. He's, he doesn't look like he weighs 230, 35. And he's got very deceptive speed. And he reminds me a great deal of, he's not quite as good, obviously, as Jimmy Brown. Or uh, he doesn't look like he's running that hard. And, mm -hmm. Uh, I'll never forget Jimmy Brown. I used to tell our kids, he's not very tough. Go hit him. You know, they'd come out there with the noses over here, <laughs> a couple of teeth missing and headaches, and they'd say, you, you tackle him, coach. Joe, I would think that the opposition is, is getting the idea that the best way to attack Penn State right now would be through a, a short passing game, a nickel and dime kind of a passing game. I don't care if people try to nickel and dime. So really, as long as we hang on to the football. Now, if we start turning the ball over to people, and we have to get frantic on offense, then those nickel and dime man puts a beat you. But if we, if we kick well and we hang on to the football and we're not careless with it, we don't give up field position easily, which we have not done so far uh, most of the time, I don't think the nickel and dime people will kill us. Some earlier comments from Coach Joe Paterno, and Mother Nature has been extravagant in providing a glorious autumn day, a postcard setting for this old run. It's on making plays that wins games. Since Schaefer became the Lions' starting quarterback in the final two games of last season, the Lions have won eight in a row. It is homecoming weekend at Beaver Stadium on State College, Pennsylvania. The university spread across this glorious countryside today. Left in warm sunshine, the temperature in the middle 60s. And here are the Lions, led by their coach, Joe Paterno. Six and all, ranked second in the nation in the coaches' poll. The Lions, a string of squeakers, as you can see, but all of them have been wins. Coach Joe Paterno in his 20th season, now with a record of 182-43 and two, and he has never had a losing season. West Virginia Mountaineers yet to come on. They'll be making their appearance in just a moment. Let's turn now and spend a moment or two, if we can, with our analyst, Coach Frank Broyles. Frank, I guess it is apt at this point to say that the success of Penn State this season is tied directly to the absence of mistakes. The coaches preach against mistakes. We believe that the team that makes the fewest mistakes usually wins, and Penn State proves that point. This year, their offense leads their opponents in virtually any, every category, but they have only had two turnovers in the last four ball games. And when you combine this with their emphasis in the kicking game, that is the winning edge. Statistics, offensive statistics are for losers. <laughs> we have an interesting matchup here, the two coaches, I think. Joe Paterno has been a towering figure in Eastern football for so many years, 20 of them as a head coach. Yet you have coming out of Morgantown, West Virginia, a young man named Don Nealon who is bidding to become a force himself. Don Nealon is bright, often a brilliant football coach, like the game we saw last year when they upset uh, Boston College. But what he's trying to do is place this West Virginia team in a position that they can replace Penn State as a dominant team in the East. But to do that, uh, Keith, they've got to win uh, this, some of these Penn State ball games. But on the other side, Bill Paterno, what a great service he's given to this university and the football. Mountaineers now coming onto the field. They'll be wearing the white. They drove up by bus, took them about three and a half hours, but in this kind of weather, 
through this kind of countryside, it couldn't have been a bad drive. And as the coach said this morning, it gave them time for, you know, do a little soul searching. And they were a, 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 a tag, a little pin that says attitude. And they had about three and a half hours of attitude talk on their way up here. Well, Keith, back to Joe Paterno. The thing that we failed to sometimes write about is he's such a great tactician. He'll be controlling this ball game today, calling every play, determining what the team does on te defense. But a sidelight to this, I just want to mention to our viewers that this game, uh, Joe is approaching retirement maybe four or five years from now. But how often will he be in a position where his team is 6-0, and favored in the last five ball games, and a true shot at a national championship? So, regardless, he'd be the last to admit it, I'm sure. But it's got a little special meaning to it. Thinking about retirement and that national championship will get you like <laughs> Well, it's a bit of a hurdle for him right here. The old four West Virginia is on the other side of the field. It could be a very good football game today. Well, the Nittany Lions at home on homecoming have over the years been terribly successful. Joe Paterno's team's 18-1 on this festive occasion each year. West Virginia has not won a football game on this field since 1954. They broke a 25-game losing streak last year at Morgantown, 17-14. The kickoff is picked up by Undra Jackson, number 34, and he's going to give the Mountaineers a pretty good starting point up around the 26-yard line with John Talley at the quarterback spot. He's 6'6", 220. John Hollyfield, 195-pound leading rusher. John Gay is the fullback. He weighs in at 200 pounds. Calvin Phillips is a wide man. He's 6'2", 175. And Grantis Bell is the flanker as Bell stays in at 5'8", and 150. First down, Mountaineer. That ball is right around the 25 where they put it down. Penn State shows a four-man front. Ball given to the tailback back field. He'll have a yard out of it, and that'll do it as Tim Johnson brings him down. The offensive front for West Virginia, Gary Basil is 230-pound tight end. Scott Saylor is a tackle 285. Chuck Jolliffe, 265 at guard. Dave Griffith at center, 260. Gary Pounds, the other guard, 265 pounds. Brian Joswiak, 290 at tackle. Well, they're big enough. They've got three wide people now and move the tight end Basil over to the other side and back goes Sally on a roll looking downfield. He'll unload it. Throwing deep for Bell and it's thrown out of bounds. He lost control of the ball as he cranked up to deliver it. The defensive unit for Penn State up front you'll have Bob White, Mike Russo, Tim Johnson and Don Graham. The backers and remember this is linebacker U, Shane Conlon, Clay Bauer, Rogers, Alexander. Duffy Cobbs and Lance Hamilton are the corners with Zorich, Michael Zorich, and Ray Isom, the safeties. For West Virginia, it is now third down and nine. Pally looks over the territory, tries to force the ball, and it is intercepted by Rogers Alexander. He had one man, there were three blue shirts there. He tried to hum it in between them, and he got burned. Talley, being just a sophomore quarterback, started the season, was benched after the Maryland football game. Rita, the starter, had been injured. Talley waited a little bit long, aimed the ball, telegraphed where he was going to throw the ball. The linebackers reacted to it. Phillips, number 87, the receiver, but 95, Rogers Alexander, a senior, jumps up good athlete, cradles the ball in, Penn State has a chance. That's Alexander's first interception of the season. They have the ball up to West Virginia 30. Turn and give it to Steve Smith. And Smith, the 238-pound fullback, racks in there for a couple of yards. John Schaefer is a quarterback. Started eight times. He's won eight times. D.J. Dozier, the tailback, 210-pounder. Good one. Smith, as we told you, big fella, about 238 pounds. Wide people, Eric Hamilton, the flanker, 6'1", 195. Ray Roundtree, the split in, 175-pound speedster from South Carolina. It's second down and six as Smith throws oh. four yards. He's one of those kind of backs. He disappears in the crowd, and everybody gets up. He's got five or six yards on you. 
This time the ball goes to Dozier, and D.J. Wiggles in there for a couple of more. Dean Demidio is the tight end, 225 pounds, 6'3". Mark Sickler weighs 260. Mitch Ferrat weighs 250 pounds. Rob Smith back in there at center after injury, 260. Todd Moulds has played everywhere, 260 pounder. And Chris Conlon is the other tackle at 275 pounds. It's third down and close to four yards now for Penn State. Papers pass, good for the first down. The pass caught by Darrell Giles, who had come in at the tight end position. And Giles turned it back inside and picked up the first down as West Virginia has knocked Grant Herzog, the big people, down up front defensively with Smith, Christian, Richardson, and Small as the linebackers. The secondary is Jones, Smith, Holly, and Travis Curtis, who is the ringleader of that wrecking crew in the secondary. But right now, they've got a problem. Penn State has the football first down at the West Virginia 14. Given the Smith. Central defense for any one person. Big advantage to Penn State. Second down and six now. Ball just about touching the West Virginia 10. In the early going, the Mountaineers turned it over. Penn State getting a pass interception for this opportunity. Ball is given to Smith. Coming outside with it. Turns his shoulders upfield. And instead of going down at the line of scrimmage, he moves it to the seven before Larry Holly can finally wrestle him down. If we look at Joe Paterno, who is calling each of the offensive plays, he stays right on top of this game. Here are the offensive results for Penn State and the opponents. You can see that they were out first down. I'm mean, excuse me, out yardage in rushing, passing, total, but in points, no. Four points per game better than the opponent. They've made so fewer mistakes. Points for what counts, not statistics. It's close to Dozier. Good blocking on the corner. Dozier with a big back like uh, Smith and the Dozier, the offensive line. I think he needs close to two yards. Yeah. Not exactly. Yard. Not a yard. yard. He's still going to go for it. Yeah. Early in the ball game, that's not bad, Keith. You, you're going to leave Penn State, uh, West Virginia if you don't make the first down with the ball in the old five yard. You'd have never done it. Oh, yeah, I believe I would early. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've had their conversation now with fourth down and two coming up for Penn State. Ball is just about the six, and they've got to go to the four. Tim Manoa. Another fullback joins the backfield. So they're set up with a power structure, a pair of tight ends that put Steve Smith in motion to become the lead blocker. And they sweep Dozier and he dives and he's got the first down. That's a great effort on Dozier's part. Not much blocking. As he got the line of scrimmage, he didn't worry about scoring. He wanted that one yard. He went right over the top and seldom. So you see a ball carry with ability that can go over the top on the pitch sweep. Normally it's over the line that they they do the jumping. Look at this score, Keith. Unbelievable. Northwestern is giving an with this. Yeah, after you play that big ball game, the big letdown, the Michigan yeah. Iowa game, you have a letdown. That's just normal in that. First and goal from the four. Inside it goes. I've seen the last three or four years. They move around, motion, get different formations uh, on virtually every day. The same play that looks like they went for the first down as they nope, they bring it back the other way. And Dozier takes it right down to the goal line, but he is still short. Like he did before his injury, as we look at the numbers, he hasn't had any big plays this year, which is unusual. But I repeat, he was Joe was so pleased with the toughness of Dozier in that last drive that meant so much to this team. It is third and goal from the one. This is the 10th play in this position. They started at the West Virginia 30. Go on fourth down. They went on fourth and two and got it. Now they've got fourth and one for the touchdown. Closure. Fake, keeping it. Quarterback, Schaefer. Penalty flags all over the place. He's calling 20, uh, out of 25 seconds. Can you believe that? Now they'll have to go for the field goal. Joe's upset. I don't. I, I, I don't see. I didn't see any unnecessary delay, Keith. I thought they huddled and got the play off and in good fashion. Well, I was looking, trying to find that little clock Where ticking it, up Keith? on the rim of the stadium. It's way over there. And by the time I saw it, it showed Good double ball. zero. Delay of game. Offense. Stop. The clock. It's right on the rim of the stadium. <laughs> you, have to, you really have to look for it to see it. 
So they go for a 22-yard field goal, denied the touchdown by the West Virginia defense and the five-yard mistake. The kick is up by Massimo Manka, and it is good. So with eight minutes and six seconds to play in the first quarter, the Lions take a three-point lead. four-yard line. A 48-yard punt by Superick and an eight-yard return with 7.09 to go in the first earlier from Jim Lampley that uh, Steve Spurrier might uh, have some interest in if North Carolina State is to make a coaching change, and we don't know that. Florida, one of the better teams in the country, but nobody gets to see them because they're on probation. And Georgia won big today. All right, here's Penn State. Call it the 44-yard line. John Schaefer, the quarterback, uh, stumbles coming off the snap, but goes down the middle with it. And the pass is incomplete. The pass intended for Michael Timmy. And has some benefits to late in the ball game. His Schaefer's numbers, just under 50% completion at it. And a second down and 10 for the Lions as he pitches the ball to Dozier. Dozier gets a great block from Smith on the corner. And he's going to pick up about seven yards on the carry. Matt Smith and Travis Curtis bring him down. Travis Curtis, number five. The free safety for West Virginia is there. He got six yards on the carry. Manoa is in, and uh, Dozier comes out after the last run. A little quick pop to the sidelines by Schaefer. He was under some pressure because uh, number 30, Fred Smalls, was coming right down the uh, shirt front. And Eric Hamilton gets again have the ball first down at their own 20. The Lions lead 3 0. Minus four yards. Third time they've had the ball. Alley rides it down the line, options it off to the tailback, trailing the play, John Holliday. But on the fumbles, the football, Penn State is arguing for it, but they won't get it. Keith, the Penn State safety man is playing to the weak side, and so they're going one-on-one. They're just challenging Cobbs, number 16, with their speed down the field. This is the third time I don't think I've ever can remember where you go deep on one defensive back three times in three possessions. White just thinks he was interfered with by Cobbs. I don't agree with. Zordich was the backup man and he was in the right place. Second down and 10. Tally with the ball, running around, caught from behind and deck at the 46. Run down by Shane Conlon and we run quickly to Jim Lampley. And Keith, in what has to rank as one of the weirdest psychological moves ever, Notre Dame changed jerseys at halftime. Leading 27-0 in their blue jerseys, they switched to a rather inelegant artificial turf green. So they led 27-love in the blue, and they're down 3-love in the green. Back to you, Keith. I don't understand that, Keith. I don't either. I don't think I've ever heard of that. But going deep has, has trying to go deep has hurt West Virginia, and deep to their possession. He's looking deep again. He's going uh, over the, now that could be called interference. There was definitely a bump by Ray Isom, John Hollyfield coming down the field. And uh, uh, Winslow back is tied in. They've got their quarterback returning. Chandler, the wide receiver's back. Gary Anderson is with them. And Penn State with D.J. Dozier carrying the ball, breaking tackles at the line of scrimmage and running for a first down after the 43. Well, oh, that's the D.J. Dozier that we remember before his knee injury. Last <laughs> that doesn't mean bring your bottle. Oh, okay. <laughs> you mean the Legion Club's closed. The Legion Club is closed. Go with the hell. First down and 10. Rollins handed off to Tim Manoa. Brilliant performance for Chuck Long once again. At halftime, Iowa leads Northwestern 28-3. And listen to this. Long with a 28-yard touchdown pass to Billy Happel. 44 yards to Ronnie Harmon. 89 yards to Robert Smith. 35 yards to Happel. So four TD passes, all of them for distance. And Iowa's cruising. Keith? That's, un that's almost unfair. He has a great pass in the past with Chuck Long. Second down, six, ball goes to Manoa again. It used to be a slow starting team. I, I think the reason is they have a young quarterback that hasn't Probably played there. before. And uh, look at the Hawks. Oh, a lot of points in that ball game. It's third, it's third down now, and uh, four and a half yards. But Schaefer looks left, looks right, goes left, man wide open, 
going to be a touchdown for Ray Roundtree. Think the Smith fell down, Keith. The defensive back Smith. He charged up. That's the mistake. He has deep responsibility first. And when he charged forward and tried to reverse himself, he slipped and fell. Round three had nothing to do but go down the field. And Schaefer very carefully put the ball in there for the touchdown. 51 yards. Massimo Manka in for the point. Out of Kisner's hold. Low snap. Gets it down. And he got it. Almost didn't get a handle on that one, but it is good. And with 53 seconds to play in the first quarter, it's 10 0 Penn State. Let's look at it again. The blitz is on. Penn State had decided that they were going to throw the deep pass on the blitz. And uh, Penn, the blockers did a great job of protecting the passer. You can see how wide open that round three, Ray round three, a freshman speedster. Watch shape of the, the quarterback. Look off the defenders. First to the left. Now he's going to turn to the right and look there. Now the safety man is completely out of the play. That's what he wanted to do. Round three has challenged and won the battle with defensive back Smith number four, and it's a touchdown. Now the isolate. Watch this. Round three, a freshman speedster, and you can see that, that Smith slipped and fell, making it just an easy touchdown play. But the presence of mind of Schaefer, playing so brilliantly at quarterback, lays it in for the touchdown. Tony Johnson. <laughs> All these college students do get into it, though, Keith. That's Joe. As I said before, I just want to repeat what a great service he's done for college football. He's our best statesman in the country today. Towering, long, driving kickoff deep into the end zone by Micah. Johnson will not return it, and once again, West Virginia... We'll have to start at the surprise quarter. Nebraska fans in Lincoln. Craig Keenan capping off a 70-yard drive to put the Buffaloes on top of the Huskers, 7 to nothing, and keeping up an amazing stat. Colorado has been inside their opponent's 20-yard line 23 times this season. They have scored touchdowns 21 of those times. Back to you. Keith, that, that's just the uh, wishbone. Colorado changed from a passing attack last year where they were last in the, in the nation in running, and they're fifth in the nation now. With that goal line offense of a full house backfield, when you get inside the 20, you should be able to have a, the best chance of putting it into the end zone. And i got to believe you're going to start seeing the wishbone more and more. I At do least too, some form of option, because it, uh, it's just simply there. There's the color of oh, beautiful Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful time. I wanted to bring my wife up here this week. Returning the ball is Timpson, and Michael Timpson finds a little bit of a crack and comes back to about the 36-yard line. He is the freshman out of Miami, and he is the best. Misdirection, bootleg, Penn State. Defensive end, Graham is hooked inside. Now, Talley, in my judgment, all he has to do is run for the first down. Ray Eisen, play. Uh, the one who comes in and scoops up the interception. Brilliant That's the play. second of the game against Talley. Ball tonight. Royals trying to hang in. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. Schaefer turns, gives the ball. And they've got the speech to Timpson now. Number five into the ball game along with round three. The two fastest to the both out wide. Schaefer hands the ball the other way for Dozier. Deke Jr. Dozier. Deke was the, his dad, and he was known as Deke Jr. Needs only 14 yards to reach that pinnacle 2,000. Third down and four now for the Lions. Schaefer will throw. Goes high, incomplete. And in comes John Bruno, whose kicks have been 51 and 46 yards today. Tony Johnson is the deep man for West Virginia. Ten men up on the line. They're going after it. 
Bell. He gets a low driving kick out of it. Gives Johnson a little bit of room. He gets one block. And turns in a fine with a 33-yard punt, a 17-yard return. Statistics are reflected there. In the first half of this ball game, homecoming weekend at Penn State, out of 85,534. And the pace of the ball game has been relatively subdued. Penn State's offense unable to generate very much total against the Penn State defense so far in the game. And right now, the Lions take over. First down at their own 32. Schaefer gives the ball to D.J. Dozier. And he turns it back inside. And he may be gone. Andrew Jones ran him down. Outstanding football teams have great running backs. D.J. Doge is one of the best at the spin off of a tackler of any person I've seen. Watch him do a 360. Then he has the speed. Now he sidesteps up number 70 and turns it over. Of course, the ball is just a little bit of a handicap. Carrying it, and Jones, number six, pulls him down. So they're without one of their leading defensive people. And the ball to Steve Smith. And Smith Gordon moving Ryan. from the 16... Maybe to the 15. One thing that Penn State has done all year, mix up passing and running. They've had as near balance, which is so desirable as any team that we've seen this fall. Lions threatening again. Second down and nine from the 15. Schaefer stands up, walks it into the end zone. Round three, touchdown! Yellow laundry on the field. A flag and a penalty, and it's going to come back, looks like. Keith, you couldn't execute the fade route any better than Penn State No, it's did. not going to come back. <laughs> 101, round three is just going to challenge the cornerback on the left side. The ball is laid over the head of the defensive back. I can't see his number, Keith. It's five, uh, Curtis, who's moved over from the safety there. Was it Holly, I thought. Was it Holly? Yeah, Holly. Number nine, the strong safety there. A little he, bit out of position. He didn't look for the ball. No, he didn't play the ball at all. When the receiver looks up, the defensive back is supposed to look up. Play the ball. Manka, extra point, kick, good. Round three, having a heck of a ball game. They've thrown it to him twice, good for 66 yards and two touchdowns. On passes, this one to Bill Happel. That made it 35 to 3. And by the way, Bo Jackson has 130 yards and 19 carries and two touchdowns himself. Let's go back to Brent and Era. And so I guess that Heisman Trophy race is from this massive structure, reach out onto the field. And uh, I would say one of the wisest investments made here in some time was the installation of lights because they've certainly been able to use them. Keith, the cost is about $600,000, but as you mentioned, one TV game or two, and since they're an independent, Penn State, they don't have to divide the TV money. Low bouncing kick. Gravy bounce. Ball is fielded. Short and returned by Greg Cutrone and a penalty flag on the field. Here's the touchdown. Two-step drop. Expecting the blitz, and the blitz was over. Man for man. Round three just challenges a little fake inside and deep. But the ball was perfectly thrown. Perfectly thrown. Round three made eye contact with that football and pulled it in for the touchdown. 17-0. Halftime, Penn State. Back to the halftime activity. After this message and the words from our local station. Dan, I'm Jim Lampley, and now we're going to get up to date in four minutes on all the significant scores we can give you in college football. Iowa leads Northwestern 35-3 in the third quarter. Long in the first half, 7 of 11 in the air, 
217 yards, the four touchdown passes, all of which traveled some distance, as we told you here earlier. Colorado is down to the third string quarterback. Hatcher can't play. The number two man has been knocked out. They are now down to sophomore Allen Strait, but they're tied up with Nebraska 7-7 at halftime, and Colorado missed a 51-yard field goal try just before the half. Michigan beat Indiana 42-15. Harbaugh threw for 283 yards. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a Michigan school record. The Wolverines moved to 6-1. and one. Auburn was in trouble for a while. Now leads Mississippi State 21-6 in the third quarter. Bo Jackson in the game. 19 carries for 130 yards midway through the third. Air Force in Utah, 21-7. Air Force, they'll take over the WAC lead if that holds up. And Minnesota gave Ohio State trouble early. We're leading 6-0 on two low middle field goals. Byers came back with the 45th touchdown of his career at Ohio State. Buckeyes lead 7-6 in the Metrodome. Florida State struggled for much of the day. Chip Ferguson, the sixth of six quarterbacks used this season by Bobby Bowden, threw a touchdown pass to Hassan Jones in the second half. Seminoles beat North Carolina in Chapel Hill 20-10. Oklahoma, when the score reached 45-7, freshman Jamel Holloway came out of the game, but he had a big day, and the Sooners lead in the third quarter. Notre Dame now leading 37-3 over SC in the fourth quarter. Remember, I showed you that Notre Dame changed jerseys from blue to green at halftime in one of the weirdest psychological ploys of all time. Navy upset Pittsburgh 21-7. First two touchdowns were scored by McCallum against Pitt's very tough rushing defense. Syracuse beat Temple 29-14. Scotch Vadies, son of former Syracuse All-America Gar Shabates, threw for one caught one and ran one in on a punt return. Boston College turned it over four more times early. They lead the nation in that category. Lost to Cincinnati 24-17. Richmond took its unbeaten record to Rutgers. Now Rutgers finally has a win, 20-17. Maryland beat Duke 40-10. Terrapins still haven't given up a rushing touchdown. Only team in the country that can make that claim. Clemson is 35-1-1 in 37 games under Danny Ford in which they have turned the ball over less than the opposition. Virginia beat Wake Forest 20-18. Badly needed win for Welsh and company who had lost three of four. Florida raised its unbeaten streak to 17 straight games, beat Virginia Tech 35-18. 505 yards total offense, 255 on the ground, 250 in the air. What balance? Georgia beat Kentucky 28-6. Dooley now 19-3 against the Kentucky Wildcats. Alabama leading Memphis State 21-6 in the fourth quarter. Mike Shula already with more than 300 yards passing in that game as Perkins has opened up the offense and has Shula throwing to the uncoverable Albert Bell. Mississippi leads Vanderbilt 35-7 in the fourth quarter at Oxford. South Carolina beat East Carolina 52-10. Bowling Green unbeaten and untied coming into the day and remained that way, 26-14 over Kent State. Wisconsin and Illinois, the Illini leading 35-18 now in the fourth quarter. Michigan State won a dramatic game against Purdue. Yurima to Butch Roll, a five-yard touchdown pass with eight seconds left. Lorenzo White, 53 carries, 244 yards for the Spartans. Oklahoma State beat Kansas, 17-10. Thurman getting, or Thurman Thomas, I should say, getting 43 of 45 yards in the winning touchdown drive. Missouri leading Kansas State 10-6. Remember, the Tigers haven't won a game all year. SMU leading Texas 13-6 in the third quarter. Texas A&M is ahead of Rice, 29-19 in the third quarter. Baylor perhaps headed to the Cotton Bowl, leading TCU 31-0 in the third quarter. Arkansas came back from the loss to Texas and uh, beat Houston 57-27. And that's it for right now in college football, and we'll be back with more halftime activities. The Penn State is trying to join Alabama, Notre Dame, Michigan, and Texas as the first five major football playing colleges to win 600 games in the sport. It's 17-0 Penn State at halftime. Wild game. Army led Colgate 31-10 at the half. Finally won at 45-43. Colgate went for two and missed after the last touchdown. And now, while some stations are breaking away for news headlines, we'll continue here with more halftime activity. Dramatic game so far was Michigan State's come from behind victory over Purdue. Michigan State moving to three and four on the season. Purdue dropping to three and four as Michigan State won at 28 to 24. It was the return to action of quarterback David Yarima, who has been out for much of the season with a shoulder injury. He came back today and threw the winning touchdown pass for the Spartans. Here they were in West Lafayette, Pennsylvania, the Spartans in white and Purdue in black. Early, Michigan State on this Robert Morse one-yard touchdown run took a 7-3 lead over the Boilermakers. The Boilermakers got another brilliant day from Jim Everett, but much of Everett's damage was done underneath as he found it difficult to go downfield against the Spartans. This five-yard touchdown pass to Ray Wallace, however, put Purdue on top in the second quarter, 10-7.
Then Lorenzo White, who had a brilliant day for the Spartans, came back with a touchdown run in the third quarter. That gave Michigan State a 14-10 lead. In the third quarter, however, still, Rodney Carter with this four-yard touchdown pass. He saw a game. Purdue was back on top, 17-14. But White again came back for Michigan State, this time a seven-yard touchdown run. And this narrowed Purdue's lead in the fourth quarter at that time to 24-21 and set up the heroics of Yarima. We're going to see the five-yard touchdown pass from Yarima to Butch Roll with eight seconds left in the game, which gave Michigan State the victory at Purdue. 28-24. George, George Perlis' team has been somewhat enigmatic this season, but today they demonstrated again, as they did earlier in the season against Iowa, that they can play against anybody. Lorenzo White, 53 carries, 244 yards, and two touchdowns. On the other side of the field, Everett for Purdue, 34 of 51 in the air, 315 yards, only one touchdown pass for Everett, and that, in effect, was the difference in the ball game as the Spartans, with the ball control work of White, we're able to keep him out of the end zone. Right now, let's take a look at next week's CFA games here on ABC. Coming off their big win over USC, Notre Dame tangles with Navy, or the Miami Hurricanes battle number nine, Florida State. CFA coverage begins with college football today, next Saturday. USC 37-3, and that's Jerry Faust's third straight win over the Trojans. Massimo Menka put him on the board first with a 22-yard field goal after they missed an opportunity to stick it in the end zone, but it didn't take him long. He got cranked up and come on down the field, and it was a big play that set up the first touchdown, a big pass play. But Penn State this year has outstanding speed at the wide receivers, but more than this, they've got a quarterback who's got poise, confidence. You can see him look both ways and then finally throw and hit Roundtree, who is, has a speed of less than 4-4 in the 40, and he just outruns the secondary for the touchdown. Now, as we isolate on round three, Smith, number four, is playing in man-for-man, -man, but when Smith made the mistake of charging up on the first fake by Schaefer, he slips and makes it an easy touchdown for round three, putting Penn State ahead by 10 points. And in the second quarter, D.J. Dozier had one of his bigger plays of the season to this point with this run for uh, 53 yards. Dozier has been bothered by physical problems the three years he's been on this campus. But he's getting back into shape after a knee operation. This is perfect illustration of the potential of D.J. Dozier to make the big play. All outstanding football teams have great running backs and D.J. fits that mold, and I'm sure Paterno is happy to see him break loose for this big play. And shortly after Dozier was finally run down after the 53-yard gallop, run down by Jones, and Jones has some speed to get him, Schaefer hooks up with Roundtree again, beautifully touched ball into the corner of the end zone, 15 yards. Poised by Schaefer, speed by Roundtree, concentration level right over the head of Curtis, the safety man, for the touchdown right before the half. Blair Thomas and Jim Coates are deep for Penn State to receive the West Virginia kickoff. Locks it deep. Thomas deep in the end zone is was going to come until Coach grabbed him just before he stepped over the goal line. Brad Hunt, big down lineman, 280 pounds for West Virginia. David Grant, the middle guard, 265. Mike Herzog, 250-pound tackle. The backers are Matt Smith, 235. Derek Christian, 230. Van Richardson, 225. And I don't know about Fred Smalls. We'll check it in a moment. 220 pounds. He limped off the field at the close of the first half. So let's see if he, yeah, he's out there. Fred Smalls playing the strong linebacker position, which puts him in on the outside 50-yard line. John Schaefer, the quarterback, pitches the ball back to D.J. Andrew Jones, sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 5'11", 175 at a corner. Stacy Smith, the other corner, 185 pounds. The safeties are Larry Holly, 6'1", 200, and Travis Curtis, 5'11", and 180. Second down and eight for the Whitney Lions from their own 22. Up, up, up. 
This is the leading Penn State has controlled the ball for field position. Upset the curve and underdog plays a near perfect game. West Virginia has made mistakes on both sides. And Shaper now on third and six goes to throw. And the ball is off the hands of the tight end, Dean Demidio. Demidio. That's Joe. Must be pleased with most part of the first half. But as all coaches, Keith, we walk, we walk, we walk. We can think better when we walk. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know, but I'll, I'll tell you, he just the most unemotional. He's a great manager. I wish I could have done that. I'd live longer, probably. <laughs> Bruno's kick is a towering punt. Lazy, drifting ball that uh, Tony Johnson decided to run away from after calling a fair catch, and I, for the life of me, can't tell you why he did it. Unless he lost contact with the ball somehow. The defensive alignment, uh, White's 235, Russo, big man, 260, and Tim Johnson, 250. Don Graham, who had a good first half, 240. The backers are Shane Conlon, 220, Trey Bauer, inside at uh, 210, and Rogers Alexander, who had a pass interception in the first half, at 215. And West Virginia now will start from the 34-yard line. So, Mountaineers won the, the first couple here. And Hollifield is not in the lineup, not in the starting alignment for West Virginia. Tom Gray is a tailback, and he picks up about three yards. Duffy Cobbs, a 5'11", 175 at corner. The other corner is Lance Hamilton at 5'11", 185. Michael Zorich, 6 feet 205, plays the hero back position, they call it here. And Ray Isom, 5'9", 180, and Ray had an interception. Safety man Johnson should have signaled for a fair catch. The ball went right through his hands as he looked up to see where the defenders were. He did not know that the defenders were so close to him. Another big mistake by West Virginia. A 59-yard punt, longest of the year for Bruno and Penn State. After Johnson dropped it, covers the ball. They won the wrestling match for control of it. First down at the West Virginia 14. Shaker trying to cash it in. Dozier having to turn around to catch the ball is going to lose. Now we're winning big, really big. Penn State in control here. Nebraska struggling at halftime, even with Colorado. Michigan won big. Auburn winning. Air Force winning. BYU plays tonight at UTEP. Ohio State losing right now to Minnesota. Second down, 11. Smith, back to the original line of speed. Forced you into a passing attack. The trap play did work. Yards on first down. There's tells, that tells the story of this ball game. Third down and about nine. Great for the throw. With some heat. One man had him by the shirt, but he got away, and the ball thrown for Dozier is knocked down on a nice play by Derek Christian. The reason to escape the tacklers of West Virginia, but he did and got the pass off, avoiding the big loss. Van Richardson had a handful of shirt, but he couldn't hold on, and Manka comes in now for a 30-yard field goal try. Seven oh two to go in the quarter. Isner puts it down, and Manka hits it solid, and it's good. So the Nittany Lions fill their lead to 20 to nothing over the West Virginia Mountaineers. That's way back there. There's no return on it. Well, Joe Paterno's students are winning the ball game. Here's what Joe says about that. I think it's more fun for the students. I think it's a bit more of a challenge. They're, they're easy to coach. Uh, they're more responsible. They know what they're here for. And I think, oh, that makes it a lot more fun. In fact, I think a lot of guys are kidding themselves, thinking that they can do a better job <coughs> uh, going out and getting people who really don't belong in college and fighting that battle day in and day out. I've said many times, if you get too many kids that really don't know what college is all about, you spend so much energy trying to get them straightened out that you end up forgetting how to coach. You get to be a social worker. And a pretty good sized day for Pinkett. As Notre Dame won. And the Michigan State surprised Purdue. Lorenzo White had a heck of a day. And Florida continues to show 
for their point of view as a football team. Kerwin Bell, Florida's quarterback, is having an outstanding year, Keith. On first down, Talley goes deep. No on this one, it is intercepted. Overthrown and shut this off. That is the third interception of John Talley today. Keith, that's the third time that West Virginia has tried to go deep on Duffy Cobb's number 16. They must have something in that scouting report that says that they can get behind it. And they haven't in any of the three times. Just a great play by Cobb. We'll be right back. Down, but, again, you go back to this little game of stats. They only have six first downs. But they absolutely have dominated the football game. And they have a first paper. Really took a wallop from Matt Smith. And he's trying to shake off the effects of it. He's going to go out and take a rest after that, Keith. He's a tough youngster, but he's got to take a rest. Matt Smith is 237 pounds. Don Nealon says the finest football player they've recruited since in the six years that he has been at West Virginia. He was blitzing on it from his outside position, and he went up and tackled high on Schaefer and hit him right in the chest or in the head. And he's got a bloody nose. Look yes, up. he did. Smith just left his feet with his helmet and with his shoulder pad in the flying tackle mode. So John with the bloody nose and shaken after the bruising tackle and Kisner now will get the call. Here's the covering. Watch him leave his feet right here and go right through the air with a flying tackle and that is illegal. You cannot use your helmet as a weapon. And Schaefer's walking off now. It looks to be all right. Of course, it's hard to know how damaged the nose is, but he seems willing to pretty much shake it off even at this point. But into the ball game comes Matt Kisner against Alabama. Remember him? Came in one play. Everybody in the world figured that they were going to run a little wedge play over the left side. Instead, he just simply took the ball on a bootleg and took it into the end zone. For a he, he, it was fourth and one. Fourth, fourth and one. And a couple of feet. From the 22, hands the ball off to Dozier. And Dozier wiggles around and gets out close to the 27 before he, he is not. And uh, the all-time rushing for Dozier, he moves up into some very fancy company, doesn't he? That's a select group that he's... Uh, Combined with, and he won't be long before he'll be up one more. 20, what, 22 yards, and he'll be up with Booker Moore. And he's got a whole season just this year to go. Disney with good speed. Rolls it out, knows where the marker is, and dives for it. And the question now is the spot good enough for the first down. Matt Kisner, Kisner is probably more mobile, Keith, than uh, Schaefer. It was a close battle between the two, Schaefer and Kisner, going into the season. Joe Paterno did not select his quarterback till the week of the game. He didn't want a controversy of Alton Tenagum trying to decide which one he selected Schaefer, but he has great confidence in Matt also. And he got his first down, so here's the snap from the 31. Picks back to Dozier with blocking on the left side. Twisting into my nose for a long time before the baseline. D.J. Dozier, 105 yards now on 14 carries. Keith Radisek is now coming to the center and lays a solid block on the middle man and the defense. Is Scott Thomas ran back the second half, half kickoff in Colorado Springs, 102 yards for a touchdown. Only took seven seconds off the clock, leading you to believe that Thomas is faster than Carl Lewis and Calvin Smith. Since then, Air Force has gotten a safety for a 30-7 lead. Thomas this year, a kickoff return, a punt return, and an interception return, all for touchdowns. Back to you, Keith. Seven seconds. Jesus. Scott's got wings on his <laughs> Good one. As good, nearly as good as the starter, but just because you played close ball games, you get very little chance to play. So Kisner coming in, he wants to look good Get right ball. here, Keith. Encroachment, defense, first down. Well, Duffield trying to anticipate the snap, but of course uh, the count, the cadence of the quarterback, Kisner, is obviously different from that of Schaefer. So, yeah. But his own people held their position well. That's back to throw it. And it's good. Caught by Brian Seiberling. Brian Seiberling. 
was a basketball player in high school along with football he had major college scholarship he is 6'6 weighs 239 what a target he is down the middle these defensive backs are giving up about six or seven inches Curtis put another headshot on him ball is at the West Virginia 23 first down for the Lions that time the ball came right off the fingers of Matt Kisner and this overthrown. Again, Jim. You know, Nebraska's Tom Rathman, a heck of a fullback who just went 84 yards in Lincoln. How many fullbacks have the speed to go 84 yards? And the Huskers in a tough battle now lead Colorado 14-7 in the third quarter. All yours. Old Tom can haul it once he gets... Well, Superick knocks it across midfield. It goes to Coates. And Jim Coates gets back to about the 47. It was a 43-yard punt by Superick and a five-yard return. The last minute is going to be a good, tough game. Back goes Kisner to throw. Goes deep. Going for the bundle, and it is not good. Stacy Smith covering Michael Tlago. That play took only six seconds, so that'll give you an idea. He had run. Oh, my goodness, he's run. 45, 45 At least 45 yards, yards yeah. yeah, including the... The fake. You know, Schaefer's cranking up. KC's needed right now. They don't need him, really. They could give Kisner some playing time, leading 20 to nothing, and 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. This is Penn State's biggest lead of this season. Keith, you, you hit a good point. I know Joe Paterno is sorry that Schaefer got hit, but it's good, as you mentioned, for Kisner to get some playing time. Third down at about five. Ball just short of the West Virginia 40. Kisner dumps it short for the first down to Smith. And Smith comes over the top, comes down hard as Travis Curtis hit him. Ball flew loose, but the ball was out of bounds and is Penn State's first down at the West Virginia commercial message and the word from our local station. Hit it by about two yards on when that ball came loose. It advanced, uh, apparently he was not out of bounds when the ball came flying out and went downfield a couple of more yards. And so he's marked up the 23 where it's first down. Here's his pass, drilled in the middle to round three. Inside the 20, close to is coming into this ball game. So if something should happen permanently to Schaefer, he wants this young man ready. Very important. Smith, 60, powerful man, drives close to the Smith and Dozier just complement each other so beautifully. This is Dozier, first down and touchdown. And a little face mask at the end of the Chief. They'll assess that on the kickoff. As Penn State early on in the fourth quarter jumps out to a 26 to nothing lead over West Virginia. Dozier now on 17 carries, 128 yards in his TD. And when you said explode, that describes it perfectly. Look at those legs. Look at them churn. 215 pounds. Has great vision. Instinct in an open field. Smith could not get him down. He the face mask occurred as Smith, number nine, grabbed it with the right hand. That's dangerous, Keith. That could be dangerous to go. It was Andrew Jones who grabbed it. I mean Jones, number six. Smith, number four. Mank is in now for the extra point kick. This the third uh, conversion after the touchdown. Got three points. He has two field goals. He will go nine if he hits this one, and he does. At 13 minutes and 39 seconds to play in the football game, the Lions have control. <laughs> Wilkerson, big tall lanky fellow. No, it is not Wilkerson. Now I'm going to get this right. I didn't have any history on Wilkerson. It is Thomas carrying the ball again, but it's John Too Good. John Too Good. 
is in there. He's wearing 19. Wilkerson is wearing 19. And I'm not even sure that Wilkerson suited up for the ball game today. And Penn State runs out of downs. On fourth down and four, they will punt it back to West Virginia. And the Mountaineers will have it one more time. Johnson lets it go. Takes a soft bounce. And crosses the goal line. Tried to bat the ball. Today's football was passing so proficiently. It's a different game than we had back two years ago. And we get a new quarterback, Timko, in the game for West Virginia. And he throws the ball sharply on a short game to Calvin Phillips up to about the game. Thinking he could pull it off. And those passes away. Well, he looks pretty good, doesn't he? Yes, this was the key chance. Loops it downfield. The intended receiver, Bell, never looked at it. The ball falls harmlessly behind him. And the Penn State Nittany Lions have polished their posture with a 27 to nothing victory over Old Foe, West Virginia. And for Penn State, it is win number 600 in the school's collegiate football history. That's a bunch. Not many teams can say that across the country. But the Lions now can. 27-0 today.